My name is Dr. D. Thornell. It's a kind of like a crap shoot back here, you know? I moved to Fairbanks, Alaska over 30 years ago and started a veterinary practice. There's a lot of kitty here. Is that one cat or two cats? Animal House is one of the top hospitals in the state. Some ladies in New York would just die for that kind of length on their fingernails, huh? But some places are so remote, I got my pilot's license so I can see all my patients. This one here. Look at how big he is. Yeah, beautiful. Got a nice big abscess. Is it bad? You have to get him out. There's no other ifs, hands, or buts. Because all animals deserve the best care. Stitch was torn up by a large dog. That's oh. a wreck. Oh, boy. And it's my mission that I treat every animal like my own. The Stitch has a long way to go to see if they'll survive this. It's almost May, which means late spring in the lower 48. But in Alaska, winter has only just lost its grip. Two zero left, clear for takeoff. Dr. D and her husband Ken have been waiting a month for this day where the weather is good enough to fly to a village that's been asking for their help. Man, this is flying right here. This is beautiful. We are on our way to Eagle to go ahead and do another clinic. And it's beautiful, so it'll be a wonderful flight. Both Ken and I are really excited about this trip because neither one of us have ever been to Eagle. Good job, dear. Yeah. You're keeping your head in here, and this looks really good. Thank you. I appreciate that comment. Good job. Eagle's a small village. It's right on the Yukon River. Last week there's some flooding in Eagle, and uh, it usually happens around spring breakup. And spring breakup is basically when the weather gets warm enough, it starts breaking up the ice on the river, and it starts flowing down river. It usually jams up somewhere, causing a flood. Hey, how's it going? Hi, Dr. B. Claire, right? Yeah. Hi, Claire. How are you doing? That's my mother, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Nice to meet you. Hi, Hi and this is Hi, my Michelle. husband, Ken. Nice to meet you. Hi, Hi. Okay. Claire. Well, we got all our stuff in the plane. Yeah. So we just have to unload and take me where you want me to go and set up. Sounds good. We can't go down to the village, you know, because the road washed out from the yeah. river flooding. Oh, okay. Yeah, 2009, it's took out a lot of people's houses even along the river along uh, the, the river, whole so. village was wiped out all the houses on the river wow. it got like a nice jam is what happens right. isn't it yeah. it just backs it came right all up. the way up to the bank mm -hmm. and we'll take you down there you'll see there's ice still next to the river yeah, well, we, we can kind of see it yeah. coming around yeah, yeah yeah well let's go ahead and get set up we got all our stuff in the plane okay originally today we were going to go down to the new village but the way that the Yukon River broke up, it flooded out the road with ice and water. So we had a backup idea of using the old school. So I'm thankful we had another option to be able to do this. And I'm very glad she's able to come out. This is cute. Wow, this is just gorgeous. This is neat. All the doggies are coming today to get tutored. Claire has given us a great place for our clinic to date. It's the old schoolhouse. So we have plenty of light, and Ken and I are really excited to go ahead and continue with the clinic. Uh-oh, look what we got. Hey, how's Hi. it going? Good. Who's this? This is Ivory. Hi, Ivory. Kitty, 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 kitty. Mm. Meow, meow. I brought Ivory in today, my cat. She gets matted horribly in the winter, and I brought her in to get shaved. You've got quite the toupee coming off here. Just to be safe, I like to just knock kitties out. Okay. This is like one-fifth of the dose I need for, like, a spay. Okay. So, but it will sting. Okay, good kitty. When I try to groom Ivory, she just goes ballistic. She scratches, bites. It's just horrible. God, this could be a politician's toupee here. 
cats learn how to groom themselves from their mothers. There's nothing you can do to teach her how to... I've tried learning cat language. and no, just yeah. can't tell her. All they know is kitty, 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 and where the food bowl is, you know, when I call and try and talk to them. Ivory is a working cat. I depend on her to keep my garden safe from the voles because that's her job. I'm a big gardener, and voles are a big problem, so... Yeah, I bet. The cats take care of that. Yeah. And even our dogs that are pets around the house, they have a purpose. They keep the bears away, and they all work. We all work here in order to live this kind of life. Well, Ivory, I'm kind of glad I have this nice cocktail to give you so you're not eating me for lunch. Oh, you're going to feel so much better. We're going to get a reputation around the villages here that we come out to give cat Brazilians, you know? <laughs> There you go. You can yeah. see this for you. Make a little coat. Like on a hay field. Look at there. Wow. It's so oh, yeah. soft. Yeah. I was thinking it would be kind of prickly. No way. It's oh, like red really velvet. Soft. She's going to want that. In fact, let me just take this and kind of make a kitty burrito. I'll put her butt side in first. Her butt's back in the corner. All right. Well, there you go. Oh, well, thank you so much. Okay. All right. We'll see you later. Okay. We hardly ever get any vets in, and for a lot of people here in town that can't get out, it's the only time their animals ever see a vet, and it's priceless. It really is. Oh, my God. It's bright out. A bright light, bright light. So, let's see. We Where have we dogs. I think so. I thought Got a bunch of dogs. Hi. How are you guys doing? <laughs> hey, how are you? Are you? We're doing good. Look at you four. <laughs> are you sled dogs, I see again? Yeah. yeah. How are you? We brought our four sled dogs in for Dr. D to look at them, give them their shots. Now, who is this? Kirby. Kirby? <laughs> Listen carefully, Kirby. Do you want your shots? <laughs> yes, I thought you did. Okay. We moved up from Georgia about three years ago, and he wanted a trap. I wanted to teach. It was a life-changing event. And this is Tango. Oh, good girl. Well, let's look at it, uh, Attila, right? Right. And we also wanted to have her look at Attila. He has an abscessed tooth. Hi, honey. So you got that little owie. Can I just, oh, what a good dog. Can you just look? It's real sweet and real timid. Oh, yeah. Is it bad? That big canine, I'm going to have to actually suture her flap over it and do some surgery to get it all pretty again. Is that something you can do today? Well, I didn't bring a lot of elevators, but it's draining. We could get him on some antibiotics. Unfortunately, it's the biggest one they have. It's the one they put the most crunch into their bite, and so they fracture them, and uh, you have to get them out. There's no other ifs, hands, or buts. And it'll flare up to where it'll, that sore will go away, yeah. but then you can always tell when it's coming back bad. Well, probably what happens, it starts to drain inside, so then the sore on the outside heals. He's been that way well, all winter. Are you guys coming to Fairbanks anytime soon? Uh, <laughs> see, our trips are limited. Um, if you want, the other thing we could do is actually bring him back with us today. If it's not an inconvenience to you, I would l take you up on that. Sure. Do you want to come home with us? Yeah? Have you ever flown before? We give you a really nice cocktail. You're being first class. <laughs> Get you all woozy. That'll be great. All right. Cool. Good deal. Do you guys have a phone, or can we get a hold of you? <laughs> No cell phones. Okay, so he'll just be here. You guys are going to bring those guys back. We'll be back and forth and keep checking with you on him. Okay. All right, Let's... great. Thank All right. you. <laughs> Attila's tooth is way beyond what I brought for her equipment today, and I really don't want to start something I can't finish right. So Attila needs to come back with us back to Fairbanks. Pretty super efficient lab, pretty easy to fix that, that laceration. I just checked in a dog named Stitch who had a common scenario called uh, Big Dog, Little Dog, and it's basically a big dog tears up a little dog, and he had some uh, pretty severe lacerations. 
on top of the neck. Yeah. My next door neighbor had a dog. She's nice and sweet and lovable, and she just doesn't get along with the other dogs very well. And Stitch ran out uh, without his leash and ran over to Chloe because he's really friendly and he likes to play with other dogs. And um, Chloe attacked him. Yeah, she's got some pretty good damage here. There's an open wound that gapes about six inches long, as well as on the ventral thorax around the chest in the armpit. Uh, there's also another uh, severe laceration. Stitch is amazing. We got him 15 years ago. He's my daughter's dog, so, you know, he sleeps with her and he takes baths with her and he's really energetic. He's a good, good dog. From the x-rays we looked at, we know the elbow is severely torn up uh, in this well. We could have some organ damage in there, but I don't see any fluid in the abdomen that indicate any kind of hemorrhage. It's going to be a difficult repair. Dr. Terry must wait for any possible internal injuries to present themselves. So the immediate plan of action is to suture up the multiple bite wounds and prevent infection. You know, we see this damage on the outside, but the, the fact of the matter is there's a tremendous tissue bruising and damage underneath the skin that we don't see. I've lost count on sutures, but if you uh, line it up end to end, there's probably about 24 inches of suturing. That's correct. As well, it looks like the elbow is uh, severely bruised, fractured, and dislocated. The Stitch is an older dog, so there is some consideration on uh, how he'll get through this, but it is serious enough that we should be concerned about his surviving this kind of an injury. And he's certainly not out of the woods by any means for 15 years he's like my little kid just uh, really scared Can and Dee are hosting their first remote veterinary clinic for the town of Eagle, Alaska. Hi. <laughs> it's very important that I get out to these villages, not just today, but every year. Okay, let's not stress them out too much. Okay. Whether it's a matted cat or a guinea pig that needs a quick nail trim. I know guinea pig that he's saying he's afraid you're going to drop him. Oh. All animals are welcome. We got a cat. Is that one cat or two cats? That's a good question. Too. <laughs> Look at you. There's a lot of kitty here. Yes, he's only five years old. Wow. Because he's probably a 20 pounder, I bet. My youngest son's 24 pounds, and he feels heavier. Yeah. My other cat eats more than he does, and the other one is little. Are you actually measuring it? Yeah, about a cup and a half between the two of them. Yeah, well, and if you could get, like, a cat food that's actually, like I say, a light, L-I-G-H-T. Yeah. And whenever you introduce a new food, you put the new food down, and the old food they give a little bit in the morning, a little bit at night, you don't starve them into eating it. Yeah. And you don't mix it or they'll pick it out. Yeah. Would it be okay if we did a little bit of blood work on him? We could. Um, I don't know if he's going to allow us because we'd have to get a jugular stick with kitties, and Ken hasn't been trained real good with kitties. Do you want to try it? Yeah, I can do it. We can try it, but I'll show you first. Do you want to? Okay. So how you hold kitties, Ken, is you're going to have to go ahead and hold him up like this and his neck like this. Yeah, I've held them like that before. Okay, and then I'm probably going to just shave a little spot. Okay. Let me get my stuff, though. Don't put him in that position and get him ticked off until I get ready. I don't think a cat should be that heavy. I'd like to get a little bit of blood work done on him just to make sure that I know what's going on with him. Good boy, she's cold. Kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, I know, honey. There we are. Here we go, bud. We're almost done. Almost. I think I drained him dry. Okay. That's good gonna boy. be enough. Good Just put boy. your finger on that. All right. Well, you did good, Ken. You had team effort, though. I had to say, yeah. Claire had to come and help. The two of you guys have to go everywhere I go for cat blood. 
I'm really glad that Dr. D got to come in today to see Lex. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yep. When the blood tests come back in, Dr. D said she'd give me a call and let me know what those were just to make sure that he's all right. It cleared my conscience that I knew I did the right thing for him. Well, that went good. Yeah, it did. This is a great experience for me. I know exactly what this community needs now. Guinea pig toenail trimming, cat shading, tooth extraction, and vaccines and spays and neuters. Got it all down, ready for next year now. While Ken loads Attila the sled dog with the abscessed tooth onto the plane, Claire takes Dr. D to view where the Yukon River overflowed, flooding the town in 2009. Wow. So this was all flooded right here just the other day. Yep, it just decided to go out yesterday. It's amazing. I mean, you got to think all this ice is all the ice for like 30, 40 miles farther up, just coming all the way down here, just tumbling and building up. To yeah. The, the little dam down below, let's go. I can just imagine 2009, this went all the way back. Yeah. No one got hurt in that, did they? No, there was actually one family that was still in their house, and they managed to get out with a boat before their house completely dumped over. Wow. You know what's amazing is that people go ahead and still want to build right here. I mean, they're still not really... That could still flood. Yeah, so that was a risk some people took. Wow, that's amazing. Well... I better go back and see what's going on with my husband and see if he's loaded the plane yet. Oh. <laughs> Looks like the weather's kind of lighting up a little, but it could get bad really fast. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for showing me. This has been great. Yeah. Eagle's a really tight community. I like coming here and just seeing that kind of town spirit that says, we're here, we're going to stay here, and we love Alaska. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot for your help. Yeah, I'm glad that we could do this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. All right, we'll see you later. Yeah. Dr. Terry's attention is focused on Stitch, who is attacked by a larger dog, sustaining possible life-threatening injuries. It's only been 24 hours since Stitch was torn up by a large dog. Stitch's vitals are stable enough to perform a necessary procedure. It still has a lot of pain in that front right limb. The elbow was torn up uh, pretty well with uh, ligament damage and fractures. But we need to deal with the pain that's been part of uh, Stitch's problem. And it appears amputation to be the best choice. And that will be a difficult surgery. I am really positive that Dr. Terry is going to take excellent care of Stitch. And he'll come out of it with one less leg. But other than that, he'll be OK. He's like my fur baby. He just goes wherever we go, and he's always with Lex and I. Alexis was a year and a half to two years old when we got him, and Lilo and Stitch came out. And that was her favorite show. So she called him Stitch. Is she going to take longer to heal because she's older because of this amputation, or is it just the same? You know, I suspect that this healing will be far faster than had we tried to do some kind of heroic uh, orthopedic things. But when we're looking at uh, trying to do some bone work and getting it to heal and getting joints to heal from that, yeah, it's pretty tough. Right. For a dog to lose a limb isn't uh, a large a loss in itself because it can do so well and adapt. So this is just one step in the process to get him through this very difficult healing period. Well, we're almost through this joint and uh, the leg is just about off and we're done. We just have to close. We'll have to wait and uh, see how things go. Still worried about what internal injuries may still be there. But now we just have good time. Good boy, put your tongue back in. There's the boy. Right, 
Tiller is our husky that we brought back from Eagle, and he has a very bad abscess tooth that I really wanted to take out here in the clinic and not there in the field. Attila, how are you? He was the best dog in flight. He was so nice. It's okay, honey. He's very nice. He's a very nice dog. It's okay. You saw his tooth here. He's got a nice big abscess. It's kind of draining out the side. He's got that little drain spot right there. That whole area is just swollen. Smile, dear. dear. His tooth is very abscessed, so it's got to come out. Good boy. This thing has got to be painful. If anyone's ever had a bad tooth before, they know how painful it is. It's the biggest tooth that he's got in his mouth. It's a car nasal. It's actually a premolar, as they're known. So I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to probe around that tooth to see which root is in, which one's rotten, and then kind of carve that out and push away the ligaments that hold the tooth in all the way around. And they just have to be really patient elevating these things. If you do it too fast, you're going to leave a piece of root in. And that's one thing you cannot do. you got to get all the tips of the roots out, or you're just going to have a nasty abscess afterwards. And that gum is just so swollen. It's actually abscessing up to the gum. And it actually has a little port right there that's tried to blow out. So what happens is if it can't blow out down here, it will, like a big volcano, will blow out here. And then all of a sudden, if it'll blow out here, this will heal up. It's getting a little looser. It's actually pulling away there. Patience is a virtue. There it is. See, the whole thing's intact. That's got rotten written all over it. See, that tip there is gone. That tip's gone. It's all just nasty. I think the tooth fairy would be very impressed with me. That tooth will probably be worth a couple good dog biscuits. See, dogs don't like money. Okay, they like dog biscuits. So kids hope none of those dog tooth fairies come to your house when you get a tooth. If you get a dog biscuit under your pillow, oh, wrong tooth fairy. Gosh, this is so inflamed. Can we set up mother x-ray and just take a picture of this to make sure there's nothing more going on? I didn't want to miss something. This looks like a simple tooth to come out, but it could be something that's just secondary to something bigger, like a tumor up here in his bone or some other cancer in his gum line or something. So you guys have to rule those out too. I don't want to miss the obvious. This is the big spot that we took all away and it's just like just some feathered bone, but up higher, there's nothing there that looks bad. And all the rest of the teeth actually look really good. I don't see any lytic areas, you know, that are like it's bone to them. There's no evidence after the x-ray that there's anything like cancer in the bone. Good boy. This got to feel good. If you ever had an abscess, oh, once it breaks open, it feels so good. We can actually put a, a little probe up and actually push water through the abscess that was right below the eye. So that tells me that is truly what caused this abscess was that tooth. You'll feel much better after this. Oh, yeah. We got him his antibiotics. Let's get him a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. Give him an injection of that and uh, make him happy. All right, you take this out? Good boy. What a good dog. You heard I was getting home, right? No. Postal service. <laughs> Sending them through the mail. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> so I just labeled him as a 60 pound chicken. <laughs> what a good dog. Yeah, look at there. Jade. She's a seven-year-old lab. I took Jade to my local vet in Delta, and he took biopsies of her ear because we noticed a lump. Dr. Kreisberg doesn't have the ultrasound machine, 
and he suggested bringing her up to Fairbanks. And since I've been to Dr. D before, this is who I come to. Jade, how are you? Huh? What are you doing? Delta Junction is a solid two-hour drive from Fairbanks. Not far in Alaska terms, but still a full day's trip. You're so beautiful. I love you, Jade. And that's the oh, tumor right there. that he found, yes. Just that one? Nope. This one too. There's this one there, and then uh, one right up in here. So the ear is possibly treatable with chemo and surgical excision of all that ear, possibly a whole ear flap. But I have to make sure there's no other possible hint of cancer anywhere else in her body. Otherwise, it's really not worth it to put Jade through that. Let me grab her. Okay. You can go shopping. Okay. And we'll see you back later this afternoon. Okay, about how long? Can you come back in about two hours? Sure. Okay. Dad, we'll do that. Me plenty of time to do what I need to do. Okay, okay. we'll see you back in a couple hours. Okay, thanks. All right. I'm very concerned that she has other masses internally and that uh, we're going to end up losing her. We just lost our 11-year-old lab last year to cancer, and I'm still having a hard time with it. I'm hoping that this is going to say that, no, she doesn't, and that Dr. Kreisberg can treat the tumor in her ear without removing her ear. I'm going to shave my girl. Oh, she likes that. This is a little belly shave. It's just a little belly shave. Now I'm going for the throat. Stop. Think what poodles have to go through. You can handle this. So I'm just going like this. Oh, I got some hair in my throat. She's a good girl. She is. She's so beautiful. She's so beautiful. Now be quiet and relax. Shh. Relax. This is the magic wand. What I'm doing is that this is my ultrasound head. When I put it on her, I look at this, I'm looking at the picture from this point of view. So it's basically taking a picture and putting it up there for me to look at. And there's a left kidney. Oof. That a beauty. God damn kidneys like that. What I'm doing here is I'm looking at her whole liver and taking pictures of it so the doctor that's referred her here can see what I've seen too and so he can if he has any doubts he can go ahead and see what we saw today and where we came with our conclusions what I'm doing is just going through to see if we can see any more of the liver around through that stomach there's her spleen spleen looks good liver looks good yay tail still wags yay she's a good girl okay just relax just relax Jade has a predicament where she's got these tumors on her ears that could be very bad. If the cancer in her ears is already spread to some other place in her body, then why put her through all the energy of taking her ear off? If it's already started someplace else, then it's not going to stop. trying to get a picture of the kidney and the renal artery at the same time stay just for a second just for a second i know so today i'm seeing jay a patient of mine from delta junction her doctor down at delta has already found out that she does have cancer in her ears he wants to make sure it's not anywhere else in her body god i know cold it's cold it's cold so i'm going to ultrasound her today so i can see if there's any evidence at all of cancer somewhere else I can feel all these lymph nodes down here and take a peek at them. So the particular cancer that Jade has is actually something that could be in her lymph nodes. So I want to see if I can see any abnormalities in the lymph nodes themselves also. Right there is a lymph node. I'm not seeing anything that looks like a mass. So her lymph node, that's the back side of it. But we saw something usually be like a cyst or a round thing in there. And it looks all consistent, kind of the same. So, yay, I don't find any cancer. Talk about a little spa day. You got your belly rubbed, huh? Oh, she's a good girl. 
keep that thing going, huh? Oh, she's a good girl. Yeah. Oh, she's a good girl. <laughs> Time to get up. Oh, she's a good girl. Oh, did she have fun today? All right. Who's ready to go home? She is. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little under the influence yet. Okay. So don't uh, let her drive any heavy equipment. Okay. Well, I took pictures of all the, the spleen, the liver, uh, both kidneys, uh, and a couple of these were the last things I did with the lymph nodes. I could not find anything that looked abnormal. Awesome. That's so. a relief. <laughs> so good. You can tell Clint that... It's a go. Okay, awesome. You know, and I I know you'd hate to lose that ear, but, mm -hmm. I mean, the other thing he could do is try and just take it off. You know, and the other thing, mast cells uh, respond to some antihistamines, okay. too. So, if he needs any help, tell him to call us. Oh, I sure will. And sure don't, will. tell him we have the laser. Okay, I'll I mean, let I don't him know that'll that help. Too, but I'll let him know. Okay, Thanks, Jay. Dr. D. And if you, if you don't have your ears the next time I see you, I'll still love you like a Doberman. Okay. <laughs> I'm ecstatic. <laughs> really happy about it because, you know, yeah, she's going to still be with us for a while. Jeez, Jay, good lord, dog. Till is all packaged up. His mouth looks fine and he's healing great. He's got his meds and everything to go, stamp on his forehead, and ready to head back to Eagle where Christy and Steve will be waiting for him. Come on, sweetheart. Let's go. Right here, tell him. Come on, sweetie. You probably don't see many of these. Whoa, okay, maybe you do. Whoa, that was fast. It's pretty common in Alaska to mail animals to the Postal Service. All right, you ready to go? Shotgun, huh? I mean, I get my chickens sent to the mail. In the state of Alaska, the only thing a dog has to have when he's shipped within the state itself is a current rabies shot. If they fly out of the state, they need a health certificate that shows they're healthy. And I'm sorry, buddy, you can't keep the sunglasses, okay? There you go. No pulling. Telling don't pull to a sled dog is like, it's incomprehensible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah you did good. All right. All right, you'd be good We're boy. We're gonna go for a ride. Can you kennel up? Kennel up. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Attila is ready to go back to Eagle, and within an hour, he's gonna see Christy and Steve will be waiting for him. One day after Dr. Terry amputated Stitch's leg, Hi, Danielle. Good morning. his owner, Danielle, has come to speak with Dr. Terry. During the night, Stitch uh, passed away, I'm sorry to say. I'm sure sorry about your loss. I know that uh, it can be surprising and you probably have some questions about what happened and all that kind of thing. Well, as it turns out, you know, we can fix outside things like lacerations and broken legs and stuff like that. We always know uh, that in the inside there's going to be some traumatic damage from the pressure of the biting and shaking. And so I suspect uh, some of the organs uh, inside were, were bruised uh, significantly beyond what we could possibly know. Uh, the, the good part of this, uh, if there is any, is that uh, Stitch was on pain meds and was not feeling any pain. Please. Absolutely.
It's very difficult to share that sense of loss on an accident that seems senseless. Thank you, dear. You're welcome, sir. I tried to figure out how I was going to tell my daughter. We do everything together everywhere we went. Um, Stitch was there. My heart just broke. He's not replaceable. He'll always be a part of my heart and part of my life. slider and Shelly is a red-eared slider. Since I got Shelly, Gus has been ramming the glass, hitting the glass at full speed. I didn't know if he has some kind of issue happening in his little turtle world. Oh, look at you guys. Oh, how wonderful. And you can sure tell the difference. He is definitely yeah. a boy. Yeah. He's got the longer claws in front and the longer tail, thicker. Yeah, you got some claws. That's impressive. Some ladies in New York would just die for that kind of length on their fingernails, huh? If you see around the front edge yeah. of his shell, he's been just ramming at the glass and just hit super hard and where he was bleeding and he never did that until you got her no can you see her they are about two feet away from each other is he eating good um he actually has not eaten for the past two days he knows there's a girl in the house now and i think he's can he's gonna go under rut that's what he's doing and, you know, and he's been with you for seven years and never had a girlfriend. So now he's, like, taking all his frustrations out of the glass <laughs> tank. Probably. Turtle rut is when uh, the turtles get aggressive. They're so lovesick. He's actually traumatizing himself. You know, this is his first chance for love. I think he's kind of going a little bit crazy over it. Have you tried to cover that end of his tank so he can't look out? I have not. I mean, that's another option is to just cover it so we can't see her. And then to see if you could ever introduce them, but make sure that you've got something that you can stop them from, you know, him attacking her, if he's going to go bite her or do something like that. You can might I just be... introduce them outside of the water at all? Or... You could try it. Maybe in my bathtub. I have a, a jacuzzi bathtub. Little candlelight, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. A couple shrimp. Little, like, little turtle wine glasses. <laughs> this is a story about two turtles. Gus, who's lovesick. I think the candlelight romantic dinner in the jacuzzi is what's needed. You might try and find just a fake turtle. Let her play with it first so it smells like her. And okay. then put it in and just see what to expect. Okay. Well, good, he's not gonna die. Uh, no, I don't think so. I feel so much better. He is just a lovesick boy, and he's not a psycho turtle. All Thank right. you very much. Okay. Dr. D's next ranch visit is to the farming community of Delta Junction. 95 miles from Fairbanks, Delta Junction has a population of just 943 residents. So today we're going to go and help pay cows. So we're going to Doug McCollum's ranch where I buy my hay. Okay. It's one of the biggest ranches in Alaska. Uh, how many cows do you have? I want to say three, four hundred. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's a big ranch. This is something I have hardly ever done, and I'm really glad that Alex is here. He's done a lot of this in Serbia. It's something I'd like to do more of, so it's kind of fun today. I get to be the student, and Alex is going to teach me. I hear somebody. Hey, Russ, how's Hi it there. going? How are you today? Real good. Huh? Delta is a farming community. 
The cattle that we have here and originally started with were Galloways. They were an old Scottish breed, and they came from the Highland, so they're just a tough, tough breed of cattle. In Alaska, it suits them fine. This one here, I had to pull him two days ago. Look at how big he Isn't is. Isn't he beautiful? Look at the size of him. Wow, that is Isn't one he beautiful? big yeah, he's calf. A, yeah, he's a boy, nice boy. Yeah. What are you doing? Like a little bear cub. They're nice and healthy. Yeah, you are. I didn't realize how many babies they have. That one there is just going to have a baby. There See the she water is. bag on her? So. She's ready. I like the fact that these are cows that, you know, even though they're market animals, they're in a really neat environment all their life. Now, that is one healthy looking cow. Yeah. Look at all those yeah. babies. Yeah. Some of these are just a couple of days old to probably about a week now. So how many total calves do you have right now on the ground? 125. 125 yeah. calves. Yep. This is really a difference of farm to table, and it's done well. I really think that this is how cattle should be raised. Are you ready? I'm ready. Dr. D, we brought her down to help me preg pick uh, some cows that I thought weren't pregnant. Alex is going to help me here. I haven't done this since school. So yeah. he's been doing quite a few of the dairy cattle were over in Serbia. Alex has come from right off a farm. They raise cattle, they raise pigs. So he's a farm boy. Come on, girls, get in there. Come on. I can probably do it myself, no doubt, but a lot of times you take an expert's advice on it. I'm going to let you go first, Alex. You tell me what you think. Most of the time I'm learning from Dr. D, but it's nice that I can show her something. Do you want to put your hand inside and see? Okay. At the same time? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, girl. It's a little hand. We're rectally palpating, which means we're going to go in the rectum, but we're going to feel the uterus below it to see if we can feel any babies. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay so you got the sausage up against right. the cervix. Okay. And you okay. see it's empty. It's just the sausage. There's yep. no fluid. There's no yep, nothing. nothing. Okay. And the left side is the same. Yep, got it. You got it? Got it. So, hey, not, it's all in the field, isn't it? It's all yeah. in the field. There it is. It took and me three months to practice that. Every day. Come on. My turn. I get to go okay. first. Oh, you are just an ornery girl, aren't you? Oh, there. That's a good way. She just kind of clean out for me. I know. You have a lot of poop in there. You got to get out. Otherwise, you feel poop, and you don't want to feel poop. You want to feel the cervix and the uterus. So, unfortunately, it's a poop-making machine that you're working on, and it's you're going upstream. It's coming downstream. Not pregnant. Not pregnant. We are getting all these girls that are not pregnant. It'd be really nice to go ahead and find something that comes through here, because I really would like to feel a baby. She looks kind of old. No bag really on her yet. I have a foot in my hand. Oh, she's yeah, got no, a foot. It's... There's a foot right there. I'm trying to get the oh. other. There's the other foot. Where's the little nose? Ow, it bit me. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. I felt my first baby. Usually I see them when they're coming out, so I don't usually get to feel them when they're inside. So it's really nice to feel two little feet all ready to come out and say, hello, world. Get up there. Oh, don't. Just relax. Don't really, Don't get crazy. Sorry, sweetie pie. She's a feisty one. <laughs> She's feisty. All right. It's kind of like a crap shoot back here, you know? Just relax. Oh. Oof. Delta. We're rectally palpating some cows to see if we can feel any signs that they're pregnant. Oh. And I'm always expecting to get dirty, but to have a direct hit right to my face was pretty uh, shocking at first. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, good thing your mouth wasn't open. That's a good time not to open up your mouth and laugh. She had a hunk on her tooth and uh, on her nose and up beside her head, and so it's part of her job. She she hired on. <laughs> she needs paper towels. It's not funny, but it's funny a little bit. But she she held it like a champ. You never have to say you have a headache anymore. Hi, honey. <laughs> you want what tonight? <laughs> Afterwards, it was, oh, it's kind of warm. And I thought, hmm, I feel amazingly young now. It's how I keep my face so nice and young looking. I use this uh, every night before I go to bed. It's farming. There's a sink in there to wash up. You can start over oh, again. Oh, you're a dear. I can finish. I can finish. Okay. We ran 10 or 12 heads through, and we got to uh, check them out and find out who was had babies in them yet. So that was a good thing. I was very glad that we had a at least three pregnancies. Well, I'm really glad that we came out and did what we did today. Russ learned, I learned, so yeah, it was a good day. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it.